time because he was a hardcore 25 years sober guy. And this is a very, very well-known Hollywood director. He directed The Manchurian Candidate, Seven Days in May, The French Connection 2, Grand Prix, Black Sunday, all these, all these great movies. And he's directing me. And we became friends, and he shared his story, very personal story, that where he basically destroyed his career because he wouldn't give up drinking. When he finally did that, he had to go through a lot of soul-searching and everything before he found his way back into directing again. And now he was sober for 25 years, and he knew what it took for him because he was stubborn as hell, just like my wife, and he was not going to go quietly uh, and give up the booze until uh, there were some hard decisions and some people took the gloves off with him. <clears throat> well, good news. You ended up winning an Emmy for your role in George Wallace. Uh, did a bunch of other movies. The championship season, the Green Mile, it's the Rage, Bruno, Imposter, Mission to Mars, Reindeer Games, all still career going, you know, solid, working, yeah. Um, Moira ends up uh, going to a church looking for an AA meeting. She passes an elderly French woman, a member of the parish. Going back to the book, the woman said in a thick French accent, my dear, you need to become a Catholic. You need to convert and walked away. That got Moira to thinking. Here she was playing this Irish woman because she was in a play at the time, playing this Irish woman, searching for strength in a play set in a tavern. And in her own life, she was searching for strength to help with her sobriety. Nothing was said or done immediately, but Moira later told me she began to feel a quiet yearning for her own shooting star. And that's a reference that you talk about earlier about recognizing that there are other forces bigger than ourselves. And you, you, again, moving around a bit, but Moira turned to me quite out of the blue and said, oh, when we get back home, I'm going to become a Catholic and our kids are going to go to Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, <laughs> fast forward a bit, Moira was... Moira got confirmed. Ella started third grade. Max started fourth. And Sophie started sixth at the local Catholic school. Um, fast forward a bit more. On Christmas Eve 2010, I told my wife and kids to get dressed up. We were headed for a special family dinner at Morton Steakhouse, a place we all enjoyed. On our way to dinner, I suddenly pulled into the church parking lot. A mass was underway, and my family looked confused. It was too late to attend mass. What we were doing? What were we doing there? Without any family members knowing, I had been attending private sessions to be officially confirmed into the church. Our priest was expecting us, and in a small, quiet cer ceremony on Christmas Eve, surrounded by the family I love and cherish dearly, I was officially confirmed into the Catholic Church. It was a very special night in our lives. Moira was so touched. She had come a long way. Our family had come a long way, and I wanted to belong to the faith as Moira did. It meant so much to me, to her, to all of us. You know, I had to, obviously, this was a difficult story to tell, this chapter, chapter 9, and I wanted Moira's full consent, you know. Should I, should I tell the story in the book of what we went through, the darkness and light of it, and uh, how it, it plays into, into, us, into, our, into our lives? And she said, yes, she, you know, maybe someone struggling with this kind of thing We'll read it and find hope, you know, in it that, uh, hey, maybe maybe I can overcome this uh, particular demon uh, myself. Um, you know, during this period of time, everything on the outside, my career, uh, Lieutenant Dan, Ransom, you know, all these different things were having winning awards. I played Harry Truman. I got the Golden Globe and the, the SAG Awards and the Emmys. And, you know, all this stuff was happening that was all very positive and wonderful and everything and and at home you know it was dark it was tough it was difficult we were struggling and the family was really going through some difficult things so nobody ever knew that we decided to to tell that story because at, at a time where it looked like uh, Gary Sinise was on the rise and all the all everything was rosy and everything 
we were struggling with some very serious issues at home, but we came through it, and uh, some very, very positive things uh, happened because of it. Um, so you never know, you know, a, a difficult, difficult, difficult period in your life can manifest itself into something that you never could have predicted would would be positive, you know, at at, at a at another time, you know. I mean, you can't. You know, you wait, you know, years from now. You know, I know you're going through this right now, but in, in, down the road, everything's going to be better. And when you're going through that, you can't see that, mm-hmm. you know. You just can't see. Somebody might tell you that, but you, you can't see it. I couldn't picture getting out of this uh, and how it was going. I didn't want my uh, relationship to be destroyed uh, because of alcohol or my wife to to go down that road i was so uh, so blessed that she kind of it it worked taking the kids and going leaving her by herself to confront this demon did it did the trick and she's been sober 22 years now yeah well i'm like i said as we started that chapter you know, you said maybe someone will hear this and it'll help them. I, there's no maybe on that. I, I promise you that people will hear that and and they will it will shed some light into their lives and and help them get through to fight this this powerful powerful demon. I guarantee it. Well, I I, I hope so. I mean that that's the purpose that we decided to share it in the book. You know. Um, it's 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 played a role in the in my service life because uh, you know becoming a you know a, a member of the Catholic Church and 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 the service aspect of of, of the faith and and whatnot uh, there was definitely a role that 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 faith played in my turning from self to service. There's no question about it. Speaking of turning from self to service, jumping ahead here a bit, one morning in September, about 6.30, Moira, as Moira helped the kids get ready for school, our phone rang. I was still sleeping. Terry Kinney, who lived in New York, was on the line. Simultaneously, Moira turned on the TV. Hi, Terry, I said. Gary, are you watching TV right now? I just got up, buddy. What's going on? Two planes have hit the World Trade Center. The tops of both buildings are on fire. Terry's words spilled out. We're under attack. Gary, terrorists have clashed air- airplanes into those buildings. It's bad, really bad. Every American alive re- then remembers that moment and can answer the inevitable question of where were you when you first heard the news? I stared in shock and disbelief along with the entire country, the entire world, as smoke poured from the tops of both buildings. Horrified, we watched on live TV as people leapt to their deaths from the upper floors of the Trade Center. As soon as the, re- the report soon arrived that a third airplane had crashed into the Pentagon. About 20 minutes later, a fourth airplane crashed near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. We heard it was United Flight 93, seemingly bound for the White House. The target was ultimately determined by the 9-11 Commission report to be the Capitol building. People on board Flight 93 had discovered that terrorists were crashing planes into buildings and the passengers had courageously yet fatefully chosen to take back the plane. We watched the South Tower collapse and crumble in a fury of dust and smoke. Then the North tower fell horror enveloped us all you say while driving through one of the canyons and this is on September 11th I clicked on the radio news newscasters speculated that today's attacks were only the beginning of more attacks to come the reality of the morning sank in even deeper our country was under attack vulnerable thousands of innocent people have been killed that day more horror lay ahead I couldn't tell you exactly why I did this, perhaps in solidarity, defiance, tribute, but I rolled down my window, stuck out my arm and made a fist and held it high. Tears welled up in my eyes as I listened to the news. For some time as I rode along, I held my arm outstretched as high as it would reach. You were living in... in California at the time in LA Malibu in Malibu Man. and even in Malibu they broke out the American flags yeah um, 
Yeah, on uh, Friday night, so it was a Tuesday, mm -hmm. and there were candlelight vigils all over the place, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And uh, we heard about something going on uh, on one of the corners in uh, in our neighborhood. So I grabbed uh, I grabbed an American flag that I had hanging uh, by my front door, and we walked down the street with the kids, and we went and. All the neighbors were gathering around, and uh, people were singing. And uh, at one point, everybody, I had my flag up, and at one point, everyone turned and said the Pledge of Allegiance, and it was God Bless America, and it was America the Beautiful, and it was the stars, you know, the national anthem. And, and people were just singing with candles uh, on the corner in Malibu. Uh, just coming together. People were in pain all over the place, and everyone was looking for something. And during the day that day, we went to our little Catholic church. I don't know if you remember, but uh, George Bush said he was going to make that Friday a national day of prayer for the nation. And so the churches and houses of worship everywhere in the country were just jam-packed with people trying to find some peace, some, you know, some, like, trying to understand what was going on and trying to find something. And we got to our little Catholic church uh, the, at the school that my kids went to, and there was only standing room. It was packed. And uh, we ended up standing off to the side, leaning against the wall. And I remember the priest he, his first thing he said, uh, I don't remember everything he said, but he said, this has been a tough week. And everybody was just, oh, you know. And at the end of the, the Mass, the, uh, we sang God Bless America in the church, and I couldn't even get the words out. I mean, it was just tears rolling down my face. Everything changed for me at that point. The, the chapter in the book that kind of uh, explores that is called Turning Point. And it was, you know, the, the things we talked about in the 80s with regards to the Vietnam veterans and my family and tracers and all these Vietnam veteran things. Then Lieutenant Dan comes along, and I, I start working with our wounded after that with the Disabled American Veterans Organization. They contacted me and asked me to come to their national convention. They gave me an award for playing Lieutenant Dan. And there was a sea of wheelchairs and wounded veterans from going back to World War II. And they were all applauding me and everything. I was very moved by that, stayed involved with them, uh, tried to support the DAV for a number of years, and then along comes September 11th. And the seeds that had been planted in those 80s years with the veterans of my family, uh, Vietnam veterans, and the working in support of the DAV, some of the, that all kind of grew into this thing after September 11th. And, and I turned, never to return to business as usual. I turned towards service in a very uh, a very active way, and it just got more and more and more. And I, I wanted to help our veterans, the, the men and women who were responding to those attacks and deploying to Afghanistan and Iraq and, and elsewhere, and I wanted to support them. One of the um, things that you say here around that is, Throughout my entire life, I'd always been the type of person who chose to act, not in the theater sense of the way word, although I did a lot of that, but I mean take action. Whether it was starting a band that lip synced for a living room full of neighborhood kids or working with my fellow high school students to fashion our own theater company or taking a great production to New York or moving out to Los Angeles so I could work in the movies, I'd never been the kind of guy who sat around and talked or wondered or thought about stuff without doing something about it, at least not for long. My response had always been to take action. And hopefully doing so would benefit other people along the way. In those early months of 2003, and again, I jumped ahead to get here. Mm -hmm. um, I realized like never before the cost of freedom. And I knew freedom needed to be defended. I knew places that existed in our world without freedom. And I knew that without freedom, nothing of the good and fulfilling ways we in America aspired to live our lives would be possible. This realization helped fuel me more than ever before. It made me profoundly grateful for being an American able to live in this land of freedom, able to make something of my life. When it came to service, I wanted to be all in all the time, living out my calling every single day for the rest of my life. 
I can almost, I can say most.